This is Adventist News Update, a service of the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. I'm Andrea Mushro. Coming up in the news, the president of the South Bahamas Conference said we have no need for the number houses. A call is made to separate the unholy from the holy. Bahamas Academy opens new library and the Christian youth take the message of Christ to the red light district of Sydney. These stories and more on this week's Adventist News Update. Thank you for joining us for this week's news update. The State of the Conference has become an annual gathering for the South Bahamas Conference where the administrators and members within the territory converged to tell of God's wonderful blessings on his people during the previous year. At the conclave held at the Hillview Seventh-day Adventist Church on Tonic Williams Darling Highway, the president of the South Bahamas Conference, Pastor Paul Scavala, told the congregation that we have no need for the number houses. He pointed them to one who can sustain them, whatever the situation. Don't need it! The God who created me without me can sustain me by my faith in Jesus Christ. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All on the ground is sinking sand. God is able to keep that which I have committed until that day. I just got to learn how to lead and depend on Jesus. Trust in the Lord in all thy ways and lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge God as your supreme sub provider. Referencing the theme, Double Your Portion from 2 Kings 2.9, Pastor Scavala further stated that in the case of Elijah, it was God's endowment on his life that caused him to do great works. Pastor Scavala admonished the congregation not to ask for the double portion if they were not prepared to do what it takes by joining hands with God's leaders and moving forward in faith. During the State of the Conference event, prayers were offered for the leadership of the South Bahamas Conference, the pastors, and the membership at large. In addition, training sessions were held to motivate greater service. Pastor Leonard Johnson, president of the Atlanta Caribbean Union Mission, was also in attendance along with union administrators. Pastor Johnson highlighted the Seventh-day Adventist Church's view on gambling. Seventh-day Adventists, our position is very, very clear. We are opposed to gambling in all forms. We make no apology for this. We recognize that God has given us the freedom of choice. By that, he says, here is life, here is death. He says, choose life, but God does not choose for us. Likewise, as leaders of God's church, we cannot mandate to the government. We cannot force people and dictate to people how they should vote. But what we can do, and what we have been seeking to do, is to inform and to educate people. Our role, our position, is to uplift Christ and what Christ would have us to do. We must remember this God who has called us into existence who has been with us from the beginning, is the same God who will continue to sustain us, to keep us, and to satisfy our every need. Your history question of the day is, in 1944, which of these pastors was appointed as president of the Bahamas Mission of Seventh-day Adventists? Was it A, Pastor L. V. Macmillan, B, Pastor H. D. Colburn, or C, Pastor S. N. McKinney? We must separate the unholy from the holy, said Pastor Samuel Talamak, Associate Sabbath School and Personal Ministries Director of the Inter-American Division. We must get rid of things like malice, hatred, homosexuality, and fornication so that our minds can be opened to the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. Pastor Talamak shared these words with over 100 representatives from the churches in the South Bahamas Conference who had gathered at the Agape Seventh-day Adventist Church 
on the grounds of the Global Mission Center of Influence on Wolf Road. To participate in the first of a three-day personal ministries training hosted by the Atlantic Caribbean Union. Pastor Talamak applauded ATCU for being the first in Inter-America to launch a program celebrating the Year of the Laity. He explained that recognizing when persons are open to receiving the Word of God is key to effective evangelism. In times of crisis, uncertainty, hopelessness, and insecurity, people are more receptive to the Word of God. Pastor Talamak closed by presenting the structure of an evangelistic sermon whose seven stages are attention, need, satisfaction, visualization, action, appeal, and call. Using Romans 5, he demonstrated how such a chapter can be preached in an evangelistic campaign to win souls for Christ. Members repeated the demonstration in groups as young and old preached their first sermon and were evaluated and assessed by Pastor Talamak. And since classes do not end without an assignment, everyone in attendance was asked to bring a one-page sermon on Romans 5 using the theme, One Man, to the following session. During the closing session on Sabbath morning held at the Centerville Seventh-day Adventist Church, each member was encouraged to win at least one person to Christ during this year of the laity. And you know, we must all ignite this passion, fan the flame, and share the joy in 2013. As Bahamas Academy continues to celebrate their 100th year of Christian education in the Bahamas, on Thursday, January 17th, they opened their new library. The state-of-the-art facilities, which were dedicated on Thursday, January 17th, were named after two former teachers, the elementary division in honor of Mrs. Mary Brennan, and the secondary division library was named after former principal Dr. Ruth White. The facilities house a smart board, e-readers, and computers that will enable the students to manipulate a number of applications and retrieve information in different subject areas. The available technology will also allow its users to access grades and assignments online. It was also noted that users of the library will have the Inter-American Division of Seventh-day Adventists interactive virtual library at their fingertips. The administration of the South Bahamas Conference commended the school for its accomplishment. I'm Laverne Sturr, reporting for Adventist Television. As a part of the Inter-American Division's plans for 2013 as the Year of the Laity, a Holy Convocation will be held from January 21st to the 26th. Among the events will be a special communion service planned by local churches throughout the Atlantic Caribbean Union and the wider Inter-American Division. On Friday evening, January 25th, along with a day of spiritual revival on Sabbath, January 26th, the weekend will emphasize three main areas. Proclamation, which focuses on the triumphant death of Christ on the cross as a guarantee for the salvation of all. Personal reflection on the significance of this event for each one of the participants. And communion, celebrating a spirit of joy, forgiveness, and praise. And a special invitation to the inactive members of the church to join that fellowship on that day. Berea Seventh-day Adventist Church will be offering training in wellness and prevention every Wednesday at 6 to 7 p.m. during the year of 2013. And each quarter, a new module will be offered. Some topics to be covered are the plan of salvation, basic anatomy and physiology, herbology and massage and hydrotherapy. You don't want to miss this. And this training will enhance your spiritual, physical, and emotional health for now and into eternity. Certificates will be issued after each module. And classes began on January 9th and all are welcomed. For further details, contact Nathan Lacroix at nathlin at gmail.com. The Maranatha and Philadelphia Church District will be hosting a praise and worship workshop Thursday, January 17th to Sunday, January 20th, 2013 at the Philadelphia Church. Elizabeth Estates, Theo Milford, Minister of Music for the Metropolitan Seventh-day Adventist Church in Washington, D.C., will be the presenter. If you would like to be a part of this experience, you may contact Annette Dorset at 324-5654. 
The annual Law Enforcement and Civil Servant Service will be held February 23rd, 2013 at the Grantstown Seventh-day Adventist Church. All officers of the Royal Bahamas Police, Defense Force, and Civil Servants are invited to attend this service to be held in their honor as the members of the South Bahamas Conference seek God's guidance and protection in their lives, and they surely need that. The Office of Education announces the fourth Education Summit scheduled for Sunday, February 24th, 2013 at the Sandville Seventh-day Adventist Church, and that starts at 8.30 a.m. The Logos Bible Software Training for 2013 will be held on Monday and Tuesday, February 11th and 12th at the Atlantic Caribbean Union headquarters on Gladstone Road. Professional trainer Morris Proctor will conduct the seminars that will feature the latest upgrade, that's Logos 5. For registration and cost information, please contact Mrs. Dina McPhee at the Union's office at 341-5153. With today's fast-paced and stressful lifestyles, more and more health experts believe that hobbies can serve to significantly reduce mental stress. It is often difficult to take time from our daily responsibilities. However, having a hobby is good for you. A hobby not only provides stress relief, but it can also boost creativity, self-esteem, passion, pleasure, and a sense of accomplishment. Choose a hobby unique to you, something you are good at, or you have always wanted to learn. Whether it's crafts, games, art, music, writing, cooking, photography, gardening, personal fitness, or sports. So, have a hobby for your health. And remember, 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 says that God wants us to prosper and be in good health even as our soul prospers. This has been April Maxey with your health tip, courtesy of Adventist Television. And now we go to Rapid and Focus Christian News Magazine. King's Cross Precinct may not be your typical setting for a sermon, but that's exactly where an enthusiastic group of Christian youth has gone to spread the love of Jesus through street preaching. You are a purpose, you have a purpose. He came to say you are a child of mine. He came to say that you were fearfully and wonderfully made by the King of the Universe. We think that we're at the King's Cross right now. But when I was introduced to the real King's Cross, man, that set me free. The I Will Share Jesus initiative is part of a grassroots movement among Seventh-day Adventist young people, kicked off less than two years ago as a UK-based website with street ministry in some of London's tougher areas. The influence of the movement has now spread as far as Africa and the Americas. In 1944, which of these pastors was appointed as president of the Bahamas Mission of Seventh-day Adventists? Was it A, Pastor L. B. Macmillan, B, Pastor H. D. Colburn, or C, Pastor S. N. McKinney? The correct answer is B, Pastor H. D. Colburn. Do you have an injury or pain that keeps nagging and has become a nuisance? Well, I have bursitis in my left shoulder and after four months of pain and aggravation, I am still limited in my range of motion and trust me, it is so annoying. And after therapy, it's still here. But I saw Nick Voidrich, who was born with no legs or arms. He is an amazing man of God who is an inspiration to many around the world. He thanks God every day for creating him without limbs. All of a sudden, my crazy left arm doesn't seem like such a big deal. You know, we live in a world of sin and we're going to have pain, struggles and stress. But we must always focus on what we have to be thankful for. God is so awesome and we must live a life of gratitude and praise. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In all things give thanks. And in my case, I still have my right arm and both legs. On behalf of the production team of Adventist Television, we thank you for watching tonight's broadcast. I'm Andrea Mastro. Have a wonderful day.